What's up guys, back here with another video for you today. I got a video reply for you here to my good buddy Steve over at s and um, You've heard me mention Steve, I don't know, a million times. Basically most videos I feel like I mentioned Steve. So he's gonna be linked down in the description if you guys haven't watched his videos for whatever reason, go get on that. Um, so he made a video about thrash metal albums that are from the era after thrash had died. Um, being mostly like the 90s and then a couple older bands kind of gr grifting off into the uh, the later era, you know, the 2000s, the 20, 2010s. Uh, so I picked six albums from back in the day and because I didn't want to force it, I have uh, five albums from bands who play a really good old school style that I think could use a little bit more attention. So while we are, uh, yeah, while you're listening to me yak here, if you want to tune me out and jam this great, wonderful, classic, underrated one, Hydra Vein, Rather Death and Faults of Faith, killer, killer UK based thrash metal. Um, this is their full length, their first full length. And then this is the demo cover that's also tacked onto the end here. Top tier, dude. Absolutely top tier thrash. Tons of fun, heavy, riffy, all over the place. It's just, that's the stuff. Uh, it's the morning, so I know it's a thrash metal video. I should be drinking beer, but this is like a, a drink mix from Walmart. Pomegranate lemonade, tasty. All right, whatever, let's get into it. First one. This is a super, super important record for me. This is the self-titled Sodom album. Um, so this is kind of a continuation of the style Sodom has really played since, I don't know, like Agent Orange. Uh, I feel like maybe Tapping the Vein was the first real true blue um, thing of this exact style. because. Agent Orange was a thrash, thrash record, man. I mean, it had little tinges of, like, the early Black Speed in it. The Persecution Mania still had a lot of that flavor to it. Um, but this, first off, check out the actual cover of the self-titled Killer. Um, this, so the first thing I ever heard by Sodom was them playing in Vakken, and they opened with the opening track of this record, which is Blood on Your Lips. And, and that was, like, the first time I ever really heard harsher kind of croaky black metal-ish vocals or what would grow on to be black metal-ish vocals and it's it's really changed a lot of my perspective i mean this one was super super important for me this opened the door for black metal and death metal in in me but man sodom never really put out a bad record which you might hear me say with at least one more of the bands in the stack here um Every track has a wholly, a, like a completely different feel. They're really properly percussive with their transitions, you know. A lot of thrash metal bands don't have any nuance between what they're doing. And um, Sodom has always done it really tastefully. You know, the, the, the cymbal hits in transitions between riffs, uh, the, the breaks in intensity and then you pick it back up. It's, it's really, really well composed, listenable thrash music. Um, and I don't know, man. Tom Angel Ripper is just a, a legend. It's just absolutely top shelf Sodom record and boatloads of fun. I mean, it's more on the aggressive side of thrash, which I tend to probably listen to more of, which you'll probably notice based on what I'm talking about here. Um, but I, I like all kinds of thrash, man. I mean, I got Municipal Waste, Watson and Jetsam, stuff like that behind me as well. So Sodom. Another band that I think has done no bad. Uh, this is a later album. This is Dark Roots of the Earth by Testament. Steve showed Low in his video, which Low is a killer, killer record, dude. DNR on there, I think that's on Low. Yeah, DNR, one of the first Testament songs I ever got into. Um, so this is their record from 2012, and they are just riffy, riffy songs, dude. They keep up so much intensity um the testament seemed to have dwelled a little bit more into heavier stuff i mean low definitely has some like death metal tendencies maybe not necessarily death metal tinges but like it has some stylistic 
uh, stylistic things that you might attribute to a, a death metal band on average. And they kind of kept that intensity while dropping a lot of the uh, the raw trimmings. So it's it's huge sounding and it's well written. And these are some of the only guys that are still still a band today uh, that are just absolutely amazing still. Like Sodom is like that. And then these guys, man. Um, this this record is just so much fun. It's super super catchy. I mean, Dark Roots of the Earth, the Dark Roots of the Earth, the whole thing is just so replayable. The riffs are great. I think uh, just, the, yeah, everybody, I mean, Gene Hoagland's on here. It's literally, Testament is quite literally a super group at this point. And it is just amazing. It's super, super awesome to see these guys still making good music to this day. So Testament rules. Next, so this album dropped in 1996, and this band's first demo wasn't until 94, so I guess they were pretty late to the party, which would make sense. But I would consider this a thrash metal record that came out after, still of the era in the 90s, but after the heyday. And this is Black Thrash Attack by Aura Noir. Um, dude, this is one of the greatest, greatest metal records ever. This is just so, so much fun. There's Teutonic riffs all over the place. There's absolute loads upon loads of replayable tracks on here. You're constantly like headbanging, enjoying the crap out of the high levels of intensity that Ornorar really puts out. There is destruction influence all over this band's catalog. Uh, specifically this record and um, what is the EP I have right here? Dreams like deserts. This one too. These two, man. If you don't have these, you gotta you gotta pick these up. Some of the greatest post perfect, you know, post like normal era thrash. It's just it kind of carries the torch for Teutonic into the territory of black metal. Um, it's absolutely amazing. I really, really do love or noir and their tunes are just something i can't argue with this is really uneventful so i'm not showing you the cd case but yeah or noir next all right so steve showed a couple traditional metal albums in there as well so i uh i felt like i would get the pass to do so as well this is king diamond the puppet master I absolutely cannot say enough good things about the Puppet Master here, man. I absolutely think this is one of the greatest metal bands ever. King Diamond. Uh, I prefer King Diamond to Merciful Fate. I do love Merciful Fate, obviously, but dude, King Diamond, I mean. So what is, there's two discs on here, and the second one, I don't actually remember what it is. But I know that... Um, so I know that there's an accompanying of King Diamond like sitting in candlelight and telling the story and the concept of this record and the concept is basically like a uh, I guess like a voodoo kind of what whatever, whatever you call a practitioner of voodoo or witchcraft uh, in this context I think it's voodoo running a puppet you know like a they're the dude i don't remember any of what these things are the the puppet master the they start with an m but uh he basically does that and he builds puppets out of people and like a lot of the beginning of the record is people like getting trapped in there for the first time and you're kind of seeing it as like eyes that are still alive that have been removed from a person it's it's a crazy crazy concept and honestly it would probably be a great movie if king would you know ever somehow manage to get that done I think that would be sick, or like them and Conspiracy together into a movie would be absolutely top tier. Um, but th th he's so consistent with how quality his songwriting is. King Diamond really, really just knows how to make a great heavy metal record. And it it's timeless. I mean, this is n 2003, that so that's way after King Diamond's uh, spot in the sun, you know, kind of 15, 16 years at that point. But overall, I think this record is up to par with stuff like 
I don't want to say it's as good as some of my favorites being like The Graveyard and Them and Voodoo. Um, I would say this is definitely up to par. Like, but like a step below, you know, they're like one, one swing less than those records. And I think that it, it's great. It's super listenable. I don't know what else I can say, man. It's not like you guys haven't heard King Diamond before. And I don't, I don't like to write scripts. I think it's disingenuous uh, if you like script out an entire video word for word. Now a note sheet, I understand completely. There's a lot of trivia that goes into these videos, but a note sheet's definitely passable. I don't know, I couldn't imagine scripting a video for myself. If it works for you, do your thing. I don't really care what you do. Next, The Future State of Wicked by Blood Feast. This is a band you gotta have in your collection, dude. So, Blood Feast cut out in the early 90s, right after Chopping Block Blues, I believe it is. And it is just super, super feral, foaming at the mouth, thrash metal from New Jersey, I think it is. Uh, but this record came out on HHR in like the 2010s. Uh, it's kind of, I guess it's their comeback record. And it, it's just as good as Kill for Pleasure. I have Kill for Pleasure over on my tape rack. Uh, I haven't picked up a CD of it yet. But it, it seriously, it keeps up in almost every way. It's just as intense. It's just as memorable. The only big difference here really is it's, it's a lot more well produced than Kill for Pleasure would be. But this is like, it's still pretty raw. It's, it's well produced, but it has like a Razorback quality to it. You know, it sounds like a Razorback thrash metal band, which is, um, I like that atmosphere. Razorback bands tend to have their own atmosphere to them. Um, yeah, go check out Kill for Pleasure if you guys have not, or sorry, not Kill for Pleasure, The Future State of Wicked. Go check out Kill for Pleasure too if you haven't, it's a great record. Um, and lastly, on the bands from back in the day. Um, this is, you know, a band that I think is really polarizing a lot of the time, but uh, I, I love this record, Death Magnetic. So I I got into Metallica really, really young. This really weird book. Check out this weird, weird digi book. It's like how they have all the, all the lyrics and stuff all in this like layered coffin thing it's it's an interesting packaging but that doesn't really matter um it's it's not as amazing as you know obviously the early stuff but this is like their first attempt at really making a good old-fashioned metal record again since like the black album i guess i mean they had some metal tinges on a lot of the records but but it just didn't hit the spot. Now this, they came back with it, and it, it's fun. I mean, I really enjoyed this. I, I'm, look, looking at, I'm looking at the track list, and I remember enjoying a lot of these songs when I was younger. I mean, uh, That Was Just Your Life is a great opening track. It's pretty heavy. It is a pretty quick moving track. Same thing with All Nightmare Long. It's melodic and it's catchy. It's a lot of like heavy, heavy metal stuff on top of like thrash tinges. Um, Cyanide in here is probably like the most, one of the most popular songs on this record. Uh, Suicide and Redemption is a pretty well known. I don't really care about the Unforgiven 3 on here. We didn't even need the original Unforgiven, let alone 2 and 3. Um, but the, the track that I'm like super sold on on here is The Day That Never Comes. It feels like the spiritual successor to fade to black and things like that you know the super like epic metal ballad almost metal power ballad i don't know what would you call fade to black what would you call this track um i feel like they're of the same ilk and it's it's really it's really really something that you just kind of have to listen to and kind of think about the classic style of this band and be like I, I do see where they were where they were coming from. I see like they're trying to get re in touch with where they came from and who they are uh, as musicians. Um, and obviously, I think St. Anger is a pretty fun record. I don't hate it by any means. 
Uh, I didn't really care about hardware to self-destruct all that much, but this one, I think it's a really great record. All right, so that concludes the um, regular albums from the heyday. And right here, we got the four recommend or the five recommendations here. We're gonna start off with a heater. This is converted by decapitation by crucified mortals. This is Craig uh, Reaper over from what well used to be from Hell's Headbangers is now uh, just Reaper Metal Productions. Used to be in a bunch of different bands with the uh, with the Cleveland scene. Uh, so this is like old school death thrash. I mean, you put this thing on and it is just smasher after smasher, dude. It's super intense. It is super, super fun. It's riffy. It's always quick moving and it is just great. Um, I would probably recommend this to a fan of Demolition Hammer or Rigor Mortis, things along those lines. Um, the solos are really, really cool. Jim Kanye, I think, did a scream on this record. Uh, I don't remember if it's this record or one of the other. This is an EP, technically, or the other one of the other two uh, full-length records. But I absolutely love this band. I think they're super, super fun. Uh, check it out if you haven't. Next, this is Vanek 2. So Vanek is the live guitar player in Midnight currently. Uh, it And, you know, you can kind of hear why Athenar brought him on board with such things. Uh, this is like a old school speed metal record with a lower registered voice. And when I say like speed metal, I'm not thinking like Exciter and stuff like that. I mean, it definitely has tinges of the Exciter style and things like that. But the main thing here, I would say is closer to like the Venom style or the tank motorhead kind of primitive speed metal, proto thrash. Uh, it definitely has a little bit of that thrash-ish tinges here and there, uh, but it's all like spooky Halloween themed stuff. I mean, dark season, we like to be frightened, beyond the closet door, werewolf, uh, tear you to pieces, witch rites, things like that. It's, you know, it's all campy 80s horror stuff. I really do dig this album cover though. I, I just love it, man. It's corny. It'd be a great t-shirt. Yeah, Van. Uh, next, I was really, really into this band for a while. So this is kind of like a thrashy crossover, kind of hardcore, maybe a little bit of sludge metal album. This is Lodi Kong with No Rules. This is um, one of the Cavalera Boys. This is not, which one is it? I don't remember which Cavalier boy it is. It's the younger of the two. It's not Zion. I forgot his name. Uh, I saw them open for Cavalier Conspiracy. They played and then Death Angel played and then I think it was the American Sharks or something like that or, or vice versa, whatever it was. Uh, but this is like hardcore kind of snot-nosed discharge mixed with, you know, Sacred Reich uh, and maybe a little bit of sludgy stuff, you know, Crowbar or whatever, the Melvins. I would imagine the Melvins based off of who they, you know, who they seem to be. Check out this album cover. That is quite the graphic. The hot dogs coming out of like this mouth portal. Oh, that is not a regular portal. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Lodi Kong, it's a, it's a lot of fun. There's breakdowns. There's tons of like fat, thrashy riffs. There's hardcore riffs, it's primitive, it's brooding, it's really, it's brutish, sorry, not brooding. It's very, very, very good. Check out Lodi Kong if you know. Next, I, uh, I blind bought this at, I think, Disc Replay down in Joliet, Illinois for a while, but this is mixed and mastered by Joel Grind, which is sick, but this is Wear Squatch with Frozen Void. Um, I'm a big fan of anything with this kind of an art style on it, as you might imagine. But this is like, kind of like new school-ish thrash, but it's got a lot of the like coroner style to it. You know, coroner and sadist, um, you know, and the kind of techie-ish death thrash. It's got a really heavy vocal style. It's like a full-on screamed vocal style, you know. It's not like like this is these are great vocals on this record here but like this has a lot more of a new age style of 
extreme metal vocal with kind of like a corner or sadist vocal or corner or sadist style of music a really thick nice uh production while not being overdone it's out on storm spell records as well shadow kingdom it's pretty busy all right so it's got some shadow kingdom stuff on the back here too i don't particularly know what it means but uh yeah it's it's a great record man check out where squash and the last one the pentagram by apocalyptic raids uh you probably already know everything there is to know by hearing the band name and seeing the album cover but this is a quite literal hellhammer worship band uh it is hellhammer almost to a t i would say the vocals are a little bit more heavy a little bit more newer you know more um more like death metal rather than proto death metal first wave black metal whatever you want to call it, hellhammer uh, i usually consider them a thrash band that's kind of like in the proto proto sphere of things uh but this is a great record if you ever like wondered what it would sound like if hellhammer did a proper record uh aside from the, obviously that early celtic frost the first like two three celtic frost releases it basically fits right into that and right in between the hellhammer and the celtic frost stuff so apocalyptic rage uh, so I'm going to call it at that. I love the idea for a video, Steve. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll catch y'all next week. Keep it greasy.